My absolute favorite word right now is resilience. Resilience. Think about it, the more resilient we become, the more we can stand firm in the face of what scares us. The more resilient we become, the more we can stay present with dissonance, with conflict, with apparent contradictions. The more resilient we are, the more we know we can face our shadows and we won't fragment. It won't be overwhelming. Perhaps it was overwhelming in the past, but now we're resilient. Now that we have more resilience, which is something you can really cultivate in your daily practice, we can face these things with a more empowered, compassionate, honest sense of being grounded in ourselves. We can embrace an inquiry-based attitude towards our process of personal growth, of healing, of spirituality by any other name. And this inquiry-based approach fearlessly asks, is this really true? What does this really mean? Resilience and the inquiry that it affords us allows us to keep growing through the stages of our lives so that when we come up against that threshold, when we hit that new area of tension or fear or becoming disillusioned, think about that word, disillusioned. Normally we think of it as being kind of depressing and yet disillusionment means becoming more free of our illusions. If we're resilient, we can inquire and we become more free of illusions, we become more integrated, more honest, more empowered. The more resilient we are, the more we can start to break through some of the false dichotomies that are presented to us in the popular spiritual zeitgeist. One of those dichotomies is you can't be in your head and also in your heart that somehow intelligent inquiry and critical thinking and intellectual acuity are the enemy of empathy and compassion and emotional attunement. But this is not true at all. Mind and the heart, our capacities for critical thinking and inquiry and our capacities for compassion and empathy these are different blossoms on the same tree of what it is to be human. They're all gifts that deserve to be developed. And if there's ever any conflict between them, that's interesting. If we're resilient, we can be curious about that conflict and about how we understand it better, how we expand our belief systems, how we become more integrated and more kaleidoscopic in the ways we think about being human. Resilience is the key, and that's why it's my favorite word right now. So the key question then is, how do I become more resilient? And the answer is day by day, little by little, by having practices where the underlying attitude is one of inquiry and curiosity and an openness to what's actually happening. So that we can stay with those signals that we might be on the threshold of a next stage of our growth that we might be melting through some defenses. And as we melt through those defenses, we become disillusioned. And disillusionment is really a very positive word. It means we're becoming freer of our illusions so that we can see more clearly, so that we can have a more kaleidoscopic perspective on what it is to be human that includes head and heart, mind and body, and that locates our sense of the sacred right here, right now, in ourselves, in one another, in the reality of the world we actually inhabit. Resilience is the key to that kind of awake, honest, integrated spirituality.